Knock, knock. You are, but I had to check. <laughs> because in my first language, uh, you greet a person by saying, Saubona, I see you. I'm checking on you. And then you often ask them, how are you doing? And they often reply, Gikon, which means I am here. It's a bit, it's an exercise in stating the obvious, isn't it? But if you're a member of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender community, you'd be surprised how many doors you have to knock on a bit longer than anybody else to get anywhere to be seen and to be present. And this is something I've been very passionate about for the last few years. Um, you'd be surprised about this because I'm from South Africa, a country that's renowned for a constitution that is the most progressive in the world, supposedly. And ha having done the, the constitution building exercise, I, I can see why uh, our relationship with our constitution might not be as painful as other countries' relationship with their constitutions. At any rate, there is a piece of legislation that I feel is misaligned with the ethos of our constitution. It's called broad-based black economic empowerment. And what's happened is that over the years, I mean, I'm a political commentator, I've noticed that there tends to be a gap between our highest human uh, rights ideals and then the lived reality on the ground. This is the case in South Africa, where members of the LGBTI community are disproportionately exposed to hate crime, to homelessness, to joblessness. I mean, if you come out as a member of the community, you are likely to have a few doors closed in your faces. You are likely to not be allowed to be present and to be visible. And being concerned about this, and, and I must just state a, a few things about how that happened. Again, knock, knock. <laughs> I'm Sia Kumalo. I write social political commentary. I write on religion, politics, and sex. Nothing controversial. But in the course of writing about these topics, I realized that many, mem many leaders of LGBT um, activist organizations are not aware of what would happen if we explicitly had LGBTI people mentioned in that piece of legislation. There are a few other pieces of legislation. But with this one in particular, the amount of funding that will be unlocked for the activities that they participate in, in terms of skills development, procurement, um, building businesses, and many other things, it's, 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 it's unheard of, it's crazy. But when I tried explaining this concept to many of these leaders, they could not envision it. You can't, you can't know something you don't have. And, and part of what they didn't realize is that this piece of legislation and a few others incentivizes corporates to get involved. For me, that's very important. We cannot rely on government money in South Africa because we don't have that much. We have to rely on the goodwill of corporates who understand that for democracy to function, you need human rights. You need to make it almost impossible for politicians to blame shift onto scapegoated minorities. That's the only way you can hold public leaders accountable. So I've been championing having this uh, included in legislation, and then it occurred to me the other day, since it's really difficult, and this, was one of the, this is the project I'm working on, since it's been very difficult to get organizations to understand the possibilities locked up in here, let me speak to the corporates. Because they're already paying for diversity and inclusion consultants, for workshop facilitators, for speakers. So I thought, why shouldn't I throw my hat in the ring? I started an LGBT speaking agency. Uh, how does that solve the problem? How, what it does is I realize that you can sell, as you sell a product, you can also motivate for the reason the product comes into existence. I learned this when I wrote this book. Its title is You Have to Be Gay to Know God. Once again, nothing controversial. Uh, it was long listed for one prize, short listed for another, won one. I was very happy. And what I learned is as I was selling the book, I was also selling an idea. Marketing is thought leadership. This is what I, I realized. And I want to now apply the same logic to the LGBTI speaking, speakers agency. As I sell the speaking engagements to corporates, I sell the reason we need to have those engagements. So the marketing material doubles as lobbying material. Does the logic make sense? Excellent. So what do I need? <laughs> this is gonna come, you know. Surprisingly, if you're going to start a speaker's agency, you might not even need money. It doesn't need capital. Uh, I just, I cannot justify anything that it does. Don't get me wrong, my mama did not raise no fool. If somebody wants to give me money, I know where to put that money, I know where to invest it, so there are plans for investment. But you can start this with something other than money, and that's what I need you for. Knock, knock. We are. It comes down to being present to one another's needs, to forming relationships. If you can introduce me to lobbies to understand what's at stake, 
if you, can if you can introduce me to corporates who are ready to have the conversations, and if you can help me meet the correct speakers and build networks where this idea, this vehicle is going to roll forward, I think we're going to find ourselves in a world where democracy is strengthened. Do we agree? Yes. Thank you very much. And so I will add, I will end by saying Gia Bonga, which is Zulu for thank you. <laughs>